Good morning, everybody. How are you? Here we are again to speak about beautiful Andalusia. And today we are going to be speaking about the Sierra de Ronda, Ronda Sierra. So, Julia, please give us a hand with the technology side. Happy to. Okay, hello, everyone. So, as always, you are all on mute, so we can't see or hear you. But if you have any questions, please do send those along. Just write in the questions panel in your control panel, and we will get to all of those at the end. And as always, this will be recorded, and you will receive the recording tomorrow. So, anything you missed, uh, you will be able to review tomorrow. All right, Virginia, on to you. Gracias. Thank you very much. Okay, everybody. So today we are, oops, sorry, I have the wrong presentation here. Sorry, Julia. It will take me one second, I think. I <laughs> hope. <laughs> Technology. So here we go. That's the one. Sorry about that. I want to speak about Rhonda. There you go. Okay. So this is it, hopefully. Yeah. So we're going to speak about Ronda. So Ronda is strategically located in the big mountains uh, between in the right in the center between Cadiz province, Seville and is in Malaga province, but you know, between the city of Seville, Malaga and, and Cadiz. So again, the south of Europe, a nice weather, beautiful place to be outdoors, to really enjoy. Uh, south of Spain, Andalusia. So this is the map. This is where we're going to be the place we are going to be exploring today, a magical Ronda. Uh, so it's like uh, an hour, almost two hours drive to Seville, an hour and a half drive to Malaga. Right in the Sierra, big mountains. It was an area very hard to reach until they did the train and they did uh, some few new roads. It was really hard, mountains. So this is Ronda. Uh, if have, you have been in Ronda or heard about it, you, you will, the first thing that comes to your head is the bridge, the El Puente Nuevo, this bridge here. Uh, Ronda was a village on the top of a hill, so it was very hard to invade because they, they, they you know, opponents couldn't get there. Uh, but it got to a point that they wanted to enlarge the city I, and they couldn't because, you know, it was a gorge. So what they did, it was the very end of the 18th century. Uh, the last decade, they did uh, the built a bridge, the Puente Nuevo, so the city was connected to another extension of, of land, and it could be, uh, you know, uh, expanded. So the 19th century is a lot about Ronda. There is the 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 time of the bandits, uh, the, the Carmen Opera. You may remember these bandits were in the mountains and they were fighting most of them against Napoleon. Is the time of the invasion. Uh, of Spain, Portugal, and most of you, but Europe by the French, by Napoleon. So Ronda, you know, is part of this uh, story because they really fight against Napoleon and did a lot of harm. And uh, it's also very, you know, well known because it, this is the time of the uh, travelers when they did a grand tour and they went to Italy, but they also came to Spain. So this is, you know, all these, uh, time all that period so this is the bridge connecting the two the to the old ronda the new ronda the building you see on the left hand side on the top is the parador so it was the city hall that was built when they built the new part of the city so on the left uh, the new part of ronda on the right the old part uh, so this is the street these are the last houses and before you uh, get into the bridge and here is the bridge on the other side and I, I was mentioning that Ronda was lots of mountains, very hard to arrive. And in the beginning of the 20th century, they decided on building a train. But for having a train, you have to have long tunnels, you know, uh, crossing those uh, mountains. So it was a big work by many engineers. And one of the engineers was my grandfather. So the house you see on the left is the house where my mother was born. So I wanted to mention, getting a little personal here, but Ronda is, close to our heart. So you see, this is the gorge. So it was not easy to build a bridge here at the very end of the 18th century. And they did it to connect the two parts of the of the city, really impressive. Here in the lower part, part on the right hand side, you see uh, the parador, a little part of the building and the walk, big walk to see the views. I'm going to show you. So this is the bridge. It was a jail for many years, you know, those that little balcony in the 
in the center was the jail and it's a bridge that is in everybody's life if you see this you know uh, iron uh, work in there you know it's the, the nun i couldn't stop myself and took this photo a year ago uh it's a nun seeing the beautiful sunset in the bridge it's their bridge beautiful ronda so hemingway was one of the important uh, americans that came to visit ronda made rondas they did uh, also as he did also uh, Pamplona and the Rhine of the Bulls, very well known. Beautiful walk, beautiful views. This is Alfredo, our head guide in Ronda. Uh, he's a very nice guy. And he's also an expert in uh, walking, the hiking, the biking. Because in Ronda, is, is, Ronda was uh, recovered from the Arabs uh, at the very, you know, right before the conquer of Granada. So it was really, uh, it was a huge fight with the christian king so they really kind of destroyed the city to be able to take it over and uh, so is you will see that we are going to be a little things of the old arabic but a lot is about the new architecture uh so what you see here is a lot of that culture but also a lot of these amazing landscapes for hiking biking it's really beautiful this is the old city as i was telling you they really built to the top they couldn't continue building so they really needed the space, uh, whitewashed villages, whitewashed houses. You see, this is the capital of the, we have two sets of what we call the white villages. One is Ronda, the other one is the Alpujarras in the south of Granada. We'll speak about them later on. I think it's the 17th of December. Uh, but it's a beautiful city because it's really, you know, they took advantage of every little portion of uh, land they had. Beautiful houses, uh, a little, uh, you remember yeah, Tuesday, we're seeing all these uh, beautiful villages and beautiful houses, um, but they were like for poorer, you know, here you see it's more ironwork, more stonework, Ronda was very wealthy since it was reconquered, truly very important houses here, and they, you know, uh, just included whatever was left after the invasion, uh, uh, into the, the the architecture of the city. This is the tower, the minaret of a church. They just built the top part to put the bell towers, but you see all this, the Moorish, you know, it's really, um, you can see it here. So Hemingway came to Ronda and stayed very, very long. It was uh, on and off, on and off. And, uh, and he was, he was very attracted by Ronda because he was very attracted, uh, same as Orson was, by the Matador's world. The Matador's world, you know, is Ronda, and the, Ronda is one of the, you know, capital city. The bull ring is, was the first bull ring made in Spain. Most of the bull rings, most of the bullfights happen in the main squares of the cities. Um, in Ronda, they built this fabulous new bull ring, and Orson Wells went there 100 years after. And he got the sculptures and mentions all over. Uh, so just you understand, this is the bull ring. You see how big it is. It was built in the new part, in the new part of Ronda. Uh, so it was a big extension of land. With uh, now they have a, a, like an annex buildings housing all the archives and also the horses. Because when you speak about bulls, you speak about horses, great bulls, great horses. So, so you see the love of Orson Welles also to Ronda, uh, that when he passed, he left very clear instructions that he wanted to be buried in, in Ronda. So that's what, you know, they, they, they did. They sent him over and he is uh, buried at the Matador uh, country state of the Ordoñez family. Very, very important. This is, to me, is such an elegant neoclassical bullring. It's beautiful. So in September, early September in Ronda, they do what they call the corridas goyescas. So they are the bullfights. They don't kill the bull, but they dress up as in this 19th century. So it's really very, very interesting. So we're speaking of these archives in the in the old bull ring building. We have friends everywhere, so we can open doors for those travelers interested in specifically these things but if they are interested in horses we also have access to the horses belonging to the bull ring so that's really very special the old very old walls of ronda and ronda you see this sculpture is uh, commemorating the roman time because ronda was very roma important with the romans also is is if 
right outside Ronda is uh, what they call Ronda la Vieja, the old Ronda, uh, with beautiful uh, uh, remains of the Roman times. So also important for the Roman times. And again, the white and the gold decorating everything. This is the old mosque. So they put the bell tower on top of it. Uh, my mother was uh, baptized here. So very special, but this, you know, it looks like a church and, and, and until you look a little bit more and you can feel it. And when you enter, it's a real church, but in some areas you look at the ceiling and you still see the remain, remains of the Moorish. So although we pretend, you know, what it is, is what it is, you know, and cannot be uh, hidden. So these are the Arabats, the outskirts of the city, quite beautiful very unique and they are very very well preserved we we have done here a couple of uh, events for clients private very special place and uh, there are very some interesting palaces in Rwanda and we have access to so we can you know really open doors to see how the life was or is still is inside those palaces so because they are still people still living here you know it's their real homes not just palaces to be shown so we can take clients here they meet the owners or not as they wish uh, and what we do in Rwanda we do fabulous wine so these are some of the wineries we we work with we recommend very good quality of the of the wine but also the visit is very special very very special um they speak good English. This is the Scalzos Viejos. This is another special wine here. You see why? It's an old monastery. And, you know, this is where they age the wine, where they have the barrels. Look at the paintings in the wall. So really very special places. And the Scalzos Viejos with, you know, producing fabulous wine also. So La Melonera. La Melonera, I think it's very special. I really like it. Um, they they produce fabulous wine but what they are doing is recovering all grapes that are not uh, you know used anymore uh so they are recovering and producing wine with all those grapes so you know the all flavors are coming back to us it's very special very very nice in la melonera in ronda very upscale very unique la melonera is very very upscale place and then you know this is a winery it's organic uh, the Joaquin Fernandez, the owners, you know, uh, take care of you when you visit, of your travelers. Personally, we can, we do a little picnic in there while they test. Another very sophisticated place of Rwanda is LA Organic. It's a beautiful, enormous country state where they produce uh, olive oil. And Philip Stark built this pavilion in there. So you get a little bit of the contemporary with the traditional also, with the wine tasting, uh, many things. But Rwanda is also very, very well known because of being a very good place for bird watching. Uh, the birds, they when it gets very cold in the north of Europe, they fly down, they fly south, and they go to Morocco, to Africa. And when it gets very hot in, hot in Africa, they go to Northern Europe. So what is on the way? Spain. And what's in, on the way in Spain? Ronda. Ronda is really big for bird watching. We have fabulous guides here for, for this. Uh, many, many British come to, to see birds here. It's something they love doing. And this is total paradise for them. But this is a paradise for hiking. Look at that path. I mean, very, very special, very unique. There's an area of uh, chestnuts. They call it the Bosque de Cobre, a copper forest, uh, because of the color totally, but isn't that amazing? It's so beautiful, very beautiful. It's a great, great walk. Very, very nice place, very, very unique, and it's right there. But also Rwanda, because of this matador's tradition we were speaking about, is a place to learn about the brave bulls and how they differentiate from the uh, regular bulls. It's a different breed, as we were speaking yesterday about the, the Iberian and the normal pig and the Iberian pig. Uh, so these brave bulls is a great place. We can take travelers uh, because some matadors, as this place where Orson Welles is buried, uh, many other matadors have their stayed there with brave bulls, so they can train. 
So we take travels to some of these places. So it's very, very special to be with the matador and really learn what is it about, you know, the bullfight. Not need to really go and see the bloody thing, uh, but really interesting to see the difference. And if you see here, the, the cows and the bulls here, the retinta, the red ones, the one we were speaking the other day, very, very nice. And we can do a, like a learning bullfighting with a matador, but it's, it's a baby bull, it's not a big, brave bull. But it's a very interesting experience. But also interesting, again, when you speak about bulls in Spain, you need to speak about the horses. Uh, the Hispanic Arabic horses of Andalusia are really amazing. Look at this, this baby just born. Very nice. So we do the visit and then we take some wine from Ronda, olive oil from Ronda. We take the aperitivo with the local things they have. So we also have a scary, a race resort. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we can take clients here to play. Hotter balloon. Look at this. At the gorge, you know. So what you see is like really the deep gorge. Fascinating. Very, very impressive. So nearby it is located Dubrique. Uh, another beautiful part in the Serrania. It's very well known because of the leather work. Many, many of the top uh, leather uh, handbags by the, all the fancy brands will be done here in Obrig. The quality of the leather, the artisan's work is really amazing. Uh, so it's a very, very fun experience, very fun place to be, to be around. Uh, but it's not only leather they do, baskets, the other words. And it's another village, it's another half an hour drive, different area. Again, whitewash village, uh, Grazalema, that I love. And Grazalena is very, Grazalema, very well known because of the wool work. Uh, they have very old factory here, the steel work, and they, they do, you know, very nice stuff. I, every time I go, I buy, it's really uh, top quality and fabulous prices. And more what was the villages, you know, is the, the area. It's very nice. So from Ronda, uh, Malaga is less than one hour drive. So very nearby also, Seville, an hour and 45 minutes. So it will be the day excursions. But that, how does, you know, tell me about Ronda, about the flavors, because we always love speaking about food. So this is uh, oxtail. So it's the bull's tail. Uh, they cook it different ways, typical from Cordoba, but also typical from Ronda. Very, very much. And I love cooking it and eating it. So if anyone wants a recipe, I have one for you. So this is the payoyo chips, very well known everywhere in Spain. Queso payoyo with the sherry wine. Love it. And again, the ham. We cannot go without the ham. You see the grease inside the meat. Proving is a very, very good ham. And the sweet, the yemas make, made with the eggs. So there are some nice restaurants in Ronda. Very, very, very good food. One missing star. Uh, very nice. And for accommodation, okay, the Parador. We were speaking about the Parador before. In Ronda, it's right on the gorge, on the new uh, part of the city. They have bigger rooms, smaller rooms. They have rooms with balcony over the over the gorge, they have rooms, uh, duplex rooms, a very nice place to stay. I mean, it's not the most luxurious uh, parador, but you are right in there. I mean, you are right with the, where things happen. Look at this. Isn't it a great place for having lunch or dinner in summertime? So this is uh, the head of the booking <laughs> in the parador. I saw the picture and thought it could be fun. She's, she personally takes care of our you know, clients, making sure they are in the right place. So this is the Reina Victoria. This is the traditional hotel in Ronda. It's been there many, many, many years. It's now remodelated. Beautiful gardens by the gorge as the Parador. Beautiful views, great spa, very advisable, very nice. And also the Catalonia has another hotel uh, by the Bull Ring. You see? How does this feel? How cool is it, right? I love it. Uh, another spa. And then we have Finca La Donaira, which is a very ecological, it's a magical place. It's one of the latest places open up in Spain. It's an amazing country state, but everything is ecological, sustainable. It's amazing. It's one of the most expensive hotels in Spain, also, believe it or not. 
Uh, we have a villa rental, beautiful at LA Organic, at Portijo here, but we have many other places for rental in this area. And this is Fuente de la Higuera, it's another hotel I really, really enjoy, very nice. So there are good accommodation choices here, better than in other areas we've seen. In Molino del Arco, this is a little, you know, more casual, but uh, truly very, very nice. I, I really like the accommodation here. So remember trying to stay in the safe side, always the wide open spaces, outdoor experiences, and keeping away from, from the crowds. Because at the end of the day, how we handle this crazy COVID crisis depends a lot on how we behave. So travel with a local in your pocket. So again, Alonso and myself, thank you and everybody from May for Spain and Portugal. Thank you very much. I don't know, Julia, do we have any questions? We do have a few questions today, and if anyone has any more, feel free to get those into us. All right, first up, what uh, is the best time of year to visit this area? Mm, again, spring or fall. Uh, I would avoid summer because it gets uh, warm. It's high in the mountains, so although it gets cooler at night, during the day, you know, in July, it gets hot. Uh, but even the winter is very special because there are no visitors. So I would say spring and fall, like always. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is the best beach to combine with this area if you, they wanted to do a combined itinerary? Well, Costa del Sol. I mean, Finga Cortesin, Marbella Club, that's the area. That part is the, is the area where to go. Uh, it's like one hour drive and uh, no wonder. And you have many hotels uh, there. You have the Nantara, you have the uh, Puente Romano. Um, the closest will be uh, Finca Cortesin. So even if you have clients staying in these places, they may go to Ronda for the day. And we also, what we do and works very well, you may want to taste, try this, is for travelers in Ronda, uh, excuse me, in Marbella or in Seville, willing to go to Mar Seville or Marbella to, instead of just driving them, get them to Ronda, spend the day there, and then continue the trip. It works very well as a stop on the way. But, you know, I, I think it's, there are three places in Spain, to me, very special to sleep in. Uh, they are Toledo, Cordoba, and Ronda. And why? It's because they get very busy during the day, but at night, no visitors. So it will be, you'll be on your own. So good idea to stay there, to sleep there. Okay, and how about how many days to really get dive into this region? Uh, again, depending on the plans, <laughs> depending on the itinerary, but I, you know, three, four nights will be amazing because then, you know, like always, it's the day you arrive, then the following day you explore, then the next day you can go hiking or biking, the other day maybe at Leisure or go to Seville or go to Malaga. Uh, so why not? Uh, and it goes very well combining with other places. So if you can want to stay in Andalusia, Andalusia works very well to do a trip, a 10 day trip, east and west, um, because it's a long drive between the two. So maybe staying in Ronda like uh, four nights, and then they can drive to Ubeda. We're going to be doing that a uh, couple of weeks or in a week, uh, or other place. Uh, or Antequera even we've been speaking about for another five nights and explore. So it works very well. Okay, and how about villa rentals in this area? Perfect, amazing. We have fabulous properties and there are many choices. Uh, so it's very, very good. It really works. It really works very well, very nice. Okay, um, how about the Ascari Race Resort? Is that open year round? And how close yes. is it to Ronda? Oh, it's very close to Ronda. I, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes drive. So it's really there, 20. Uh, nearby, very easy. And it's open and, you know, we can have the travelers really, you know, using it, racing. So not just visiting, but really experiencing. Yeah, it's very, very fun. Okay, now we have a question from Tuesday's webinar. Um, mm -hmm. Serrano ham is available in the United States and people are wondering the difference between the Serrano and the Iberico in Bellota. 
that they don't get so much in the states. Okay, that for that we need a full hour, I guess. But I would say the Iberico means that at least fifty percent of the breed of the uh, pig, fifty percent of that pig, is one of those little black, little black animals. So that's the fifty percent. And then the Iberico and the Bellota, the difference is more about what they eat, what they eat. That will be the the bellota is the acorn. Uh, so if they are fed full with acorn and they are full Iberian pig, then they will be the Iberian uh, bellota, Iber iberico. But then the serrano, serrano is more whiter pig and could be fed with uh, acorn, but also could be fed with chestnuts or you know other things. But this is, you know, I don't know who asked that, but ask that person, please email me i'll send you i mean i i want you to come over to spain i take you around and you'll be tasting them all and learning about them all because it's it's fabulous <laughs> <laughs> okay and so for those jamon lovers speaking of tuesday's webinar would this be a good place ronda to combine with jabugo aracena aroche are they different enough to they are so different totally opposite uh, totally different, so they combine very, very well. Uh, uh, Aracena is more uh, rural. I would say Ronda is a little more sophisticated, uh, but still, you know, goes very, very well. Very, very different. Uh, Andalusia is big and is very diverse, so it really, you know, you it makes sense. It makes sense to combine both, for sure. Okay, now if clients choose to rent a car, uh, can we arrange guides to meet them in different destinations? And do we recommend that the, that the clients rent a car? Yeah, 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 R renting a car is good. I would say uh, driving, the drive from Marbella to Ronda is very similar to the drive from Como to Bellagio. <laughs> so, you know, a little like this. Uh, but you know, I think nowadays with the better roads, the GPS, and the and the you know the better cars is very doable. I think it's great. I I, I do recommend uh, if if travelers really want to enjoy to to rent a car, it's a lot of fun. Unless they they want to drink at lunch and then drive, no way. <laughs> but yes, yes, I think it's a great way to explore because then you can go to the little villages, so it's a lot of fun. But be careful, the drive is a little. <laughs> okay, great. And can you repeat the town where uh, we can get great leather? Ubrique. Ubrique. U B R I Q U E. Ubrique. And we even have a matador from Ubrique, and his name is Jesulín de Ubrique. So this is an area of bullfighters. <laughs> so a lot of weather, leather, yeah. Ubrique. And Grazalema is the one. Uh, Ubrique. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and those will both be included in our guide tomorrow with recommendations for shops and things. Um, okay, now is this area accessible by the high speed train, the AVE? No. No, not yet. I mean, not yet. We hope we'll have it. But the, the high speed train gets to Seville, so then drive and against to Antequera, which is one hour drive also. There is a train that uh, connects uh, Madrid with Ronda. Uh, it's about four hours drive, four hours train ride. So it, it works very well. It's not as luxurious or fast, but you know, it's doable by train. And then you can stay in Ronda some days and continue to the area we we're speaking uh, about before, Tarifa, Soto Grande, all that. It's another drive, Wagwar, and we'll get that. Okay, um, is there a connection between John Fulton and Ronda? John Fulton, maybe, but I don't know who is John Fulton. Do you know? John I don't Lee? either. <laughs> Sorry. I'll take right. note. John Fulton. Excuse my ignorance. No, Sorry. Either. Um, how about bullfighting tickets? Is that something we're able to secure? Yeah, totally. Of course. Yeah. 
we, we take care of all those little things. Bullfighting okay. tickets and not only that, but getting the best seat at the bullfight. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the last question for today isn't really a question, it's more a request. Everyone wants the oxtail recipe, so I think we'll have to include that. <laughs> okay, it's very easy, it's very easy. And it, it depends on the quality of the oxtail, but totally depends on the quality of the red wine you use. Okay, Julie, I will send you the recipe so you, you can include it tomorrow. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. That's funny. All right, so that's <laughs> it for the questions for today. And our next session will be next Tuesday, December 8th at 6, 6 o'clock Madrid time, as always. And we will be visiting Cafaya de la Sierra. Uh, so we hope to see you all then. And I will, of course, be sending your uh, recordings and pocket guides tomorrow. Thank you. Virginia? Gracias. Thank you very much. So we will be going to the Sierra Norte, the northern Sierra of Seville, on Tuesday together. Can't wait. Have a great weekend. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.